Hi everybody, Dr. Britt Tally Daniel, MD, and I'm a neurologist and headache doctor. Today I'm talking on the subject of, does migraine cause MRI abnormalities? Well, any physician who sees headache patients and reviews MRI scans knows the problem. The patient has an MRI scan to evaluate some problem, headache, fainting, visual symptoms, off balance, the radiologist notes numerous T2 microvascular lesions and gives a differential diagnosis of autoimmune disease, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, atherosclerotic heart disease, migraine or demyelinating disease, which means MS or multiple sclerosis. When the doctor discusses the results of the patient, MS is all that the patient here and focuses on. If the first doctor is a family practice physician or internist, uh, then the patient is shipped off to a neurologist to sort it out. This following article is a discussion of whether migraine can cause MRI abnormalities. So, does migraine cause MRI abnormalities? Migraine can cause an increased number of T2 microvascular lesions. These are referred to casually as spots or white dots and specifically as WMAs, which means white matter abnormalities, or T2 microvascular lesions. As far as currently know, these T2 microvascular lesions are not associated with increased risk of stroke or cognitive loss and have no serious pathological significance. Related questions. What's the incidence of these T2 microvascular lesions with migraine? This is difficult to answer because the studies have been reported reveal a large variation of incidence and this lack of consistently likely reflects different epidemiologic techniques for studies. Also reliable medical reports in this issue involve only migraine patients and exclude other medical issues associated with increased numbers of T2 microvascular disease, again like diabetes. Reported MAA white matter abnormality instance varies from 6 to 10.3 to 12 to 14 to 16 to 43 and 12 to 46 percent. So you can see there's a wide spread there. What is the incidence of T2 microvascular lesions with the various types of migraine? The incident range here is migraine with RI 8.1 percent, migraine without RI 2.2 percent, and controls 0.7 percent. What is the differential diagnosis of T2 microvascular lesions seen on MRI scan? Other medical diagnoses that also can cause these lesions are diabetes mellitus, hypertensive and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, multiple sclerosis, cadacil, which is cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy with subcortical infarcts and leukoencephalopathy, stroke, chronic small vessel deep white matter ischemic change, and autoimmune cerebral vasculitis. How often are patients given a medical diagnosis of migraine? Since the American Migraine Prevalence and Prevention Study, which was done years back, so it showed that 56% of patients have ever received a medical diagnosis of migraine. It's not surprising that when they get an MRI scan that shows lesions due to migraine, the patient has never been given a diagnosis. 56% of them have never received a diagnosis from a doctor. In this scenario, it's incumbent upon the neurologist to establish a diagnosis, which usually will be migraine, with or without R, and then educate and treat the patient. The lesions are called spots, white dots, microvascular T2 lesions, and WMAs, which means white matter abnormalities. And the name I like to use in the office is migraine freckles because it's gently humorous. And nearly everybody has some freckles, they don't mean anything. What are medical articles on the frequency of MRI abnormalities with migraine? Cooney et al. writing in Headache in uh, 1996 on frequency of magnetic, magnetic resonance imaging abnormalities in patients with migraine noted that MRI abnormalities with migraine have been reported to be 12 to 14, 46%, 12, 14, 46%. For their study, a neuroradiologist re reviewed retrospectively 185 consecutive MRI scans of patients diagnosed with migraine by a neurologist. They analyzed age, sex, type of migraine, duration of symptoms, and other medical conditions. Their results were that 60% of the scans had focal white matter abnormalities. 
among patients less than 50 years of age without hypertension, atherosclerotic, cardiovascular disease, uh, diabetes, mellitus, autoimmune disorder, or demyelinating disease, only 6% of those in that group had white matter changes. Increased frequency of lesions correlated with age and medical risk factors, but not with sex, type of migraine, or duration of migraine symptoms. These doctors stated in conclusion, the observed frequency of MRI abnormalities in our series is lower than has been previously reported. In many cases, these abnormalities may be unrelated to migraine. When such changes are discovered in a patient with migraine, other etiologies should be considered. Schwartz et al. writing in 2004 on in the Archives of Neurology on migraine is associated with magnetic resonance, imaging, white matter abnormalities. They performed a meta-analysis of seven studies regarding the relationship between migraine and WMAs, and the authors concluded, quote, subjects with migraine are at higher risk of having WMAs on magnetic resonance images than those without migraine. This increased risk is present even in younger individuals who do not have co-occurring cerebral vascular disease risk factors. Prospective studies are needed to determine whether the increased risk of stroke in migraine is mediated or foreshadowed by the presence of WMAs. And later that's been done, I'll talk about that later on here. Toth et al. writing in 2007 in a Russian journal on the prevalence of white matter abnormalities on magnetic resonant images of migraine stated, quote, the prevalence of MWAs was 10.3% among the migraineurs patients without comorbidities, as I've mentioned before, and it was 3.1% in the group of pet controls without migraine or other disease mentioned. The data presented here shows that there is a relationship between migraine and WMAs. The association and the risk of falling stroke is not clear. Now we know that it's, there's really no risk. There are well-known studies analyzing the prevalence of silent infarction too, but there needs to be a long prospective study to answer the question exactly. Well, that was later done, I'll talk about that in a minute. Mastiano had all writing in Neurological Sciences in 2007 on the role of the clinician in interpreting conventional neuroimaging findings in migraine patients stated, changes in cerebral white matter at CT or MRI scan have been reported in patients with migraine, especially those with migraine with aura. Similar pictures may be present in asymptomatic subjects. Their nature is not completely understood, but their infarct-like nature is strongly suggested. Clinicians play an important role in the evaluation of those migraine patients in whom these nonspecific abnormalities are present. So, next we have Alan Bashar et al. who wrote in Neurology in 2013 on migraine and structural changes in the brain, a systematic review and meta-analysis. So what they want to do is to evaluate their association between migraine with and without R in three types of structural brain abnormalities. They also saw white matter abnormalities, infarct-like lesions, and biometric changes in gray and white matter regions. So they reviewed PubMed for a group of articles which uh, went through January 2013 and the results here were that this data suggests that migraine may be a risk factor for structural changes in the brain. Additional longitudinal studies are needed to determine the differential influence of migraine with or without aura to better characterize the effects of attack frequency and to assess longitudinal changes in the brain structure and function. All right, that leads up to current data and day time where with literature now we've reviewed some of these things and Dr. Goldsby, Peter Goldsby, a neurologist, and professor at uh, King's Clinical Research Facility in London and the University of California in San Francisco, who's a world-renowned, important headache doctor. Um, he made some statements in the American Migraine Trust, Trust in a document in 2018 on migraine and brain lesions. He stated, quote, to the best of understanding that um, many patients are unnecessarily concerned about long-term brain damage to the best of our understanding, that's completely wrong, he says. There's no association with cognitive function or thinking problems associated with these changes. So now we can state that after looking at this over a long period of time. Many patients and doctors overestimate the implication of the lesions. Goes me and many other headache specialists say they're confident that the risk of long-term damage is not a cause for concern. Another study they cite to support this is a population-based study from the Netherlands called the CAMERA study. In this study, researchers compared the brain scans of healthy control subjects 
and the scans of people with migraine with aura. They examined the same subjects nine years later to determine whether people with migraine developed new lesions and whether these lesions were associated with changes in concentration, memory, information processing, and other cognitive tasks. They found that people with migraine had a slight increase in the number of lesions, but there was no evidence of neurological impairment related to these changes. These same changes can occur in children and adolescents. In addition, age is a known factor that increases the risk of these tiny white matter lesions. The EVA study, a French population-based study on migraine and cognitive decline, conducted brain scans and cognitive function tests on subjects with and without migraine with R who were born between 1922 and 1932. Again, they found no association between the observed brain changes and any evidence of cognitive dysfunction. Quote, Sadly, we're getting a little bit less cognitive flu wear, you might say, with time. But there is no difference between migraine patients and those without migraine. When you look at the population-based evidence, the really good studies, there's no good evidence that these changes on the brain are even lesions because they don't cause anything, and there's no evidence at all that migraine does excessive damage to the brain. Again, my joke about migraine freckles. People focus on symptoms and not perceive lists. So Dr. Gosby says, patients are often concerned that brain changes correlate with stroke or cognitive dysfunction later. This is not the case. In fact, the stroke risk for migraine sufferers becomes less prominent after the age of 45, so there's not an increased risk of stroke. Patients with migraine with aura face a small risk of stroke compared to population studies. Um, that, that, because of the low risk, goes we say migraine patients who have regular normal physical examinations do not need to get regular brain scans. He says that the pain of migraine attacks is the symptom that patients and their care teams should prioritize. In other words, treat the migraine, not the possibility of lesions or the fear of increased stroke risk. It should also be noted that the presence of these lesions should not influence the use of any particular medication. Quote, migraine is an inherited episodic brain disease, Gosby says. It doesn't shorten life, it ruins it. Migraine patients do not have to be worried about long-term brain damage. It simply doesn't happen. And at the end of here, one more article, that's a newer article, Mohammed Negum, who wrote in the Egypt Journal of Psychiatry on the relation between migraine patients with white matter abnormalities in MRI scanning. His conclusions there were white matter hypertensities are present in 43.1% of migraine patients. Age, presence of aura, nausea, disability during the attack, resistance to treatment, the severity of headache, and duration of migraine are considered a risk factor for development of white matter hyperintensities. Now, if you go to my webpage, www.drmigraine.com, and go to this article, I got a picture of the MRI scan that was with this journal and shows a small, tiny little lesion. I'm going to read this. This was a 50-year-old female patient, not known to have any chronic illness, who presented with migraine with aura for a 10-year duration of grade 3 severity. Axial flare MRI image shows a single, single bright focus at the right uh, centrum semial valley there. You can see that lesion on the web page there. So this is the end of my talk today. Please click subscribe down there so we can follow each other. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, look over on um, YouTube to see any other migraine articles that I have and, and movies I've got there. God bless all you folks with migraine, and I will see you on the next talk.